Hello, and welcome to another episode of North Coast History and Haunts. We're at the home of Deanna Shreve. She lived with there with her boyfriend, Robert Moore, who had been released from prison serving 15 years for the murder of Virginia Lokorchek, who he beat to death and left for dead. Also living in the house that night was Deanna's son, 17-year-old Charles Shreve. On the night of June 2, 2009, Charles Shreve would be at the house with his friend Erica Tice, as well as his girlfriend, Glenna White. Glenna had a turbulent home life and decided to run away with Charles and only intended to stay overnight before leaving the following day. During that evening, 37-year-old Robert Moore would supply the three with alcohol, and at some point, Erica would engage in a physical confrontation with Glenna, but seemed to have patched things up as the evening progressed. After a night of drinking, all would go to sleep, only to be woken later that night by Glenna White, clad only in a bedsheet, screaming to her friend Erica that Robert Moore had tried to rape her. The three friends confronted Moore, who flew into a rage and demanded that Glenna White leave immediately. And wearing only pajama pants, Robert Moore insisted on driving Glenna home himself. Erica Tice tried to go with the pair, but was told to stay back by Robert Moore. Glenna White and Robert Moore got into Deanna Shreve's car, and off they drove into the night. This would be the last time anyone would ever see Glenna White alive again. Deanna Shreve said Robert Moore returned back to the house 90 minutes later and was covered with mud and blood and his knuckles were cut and bleeding. He claimed he sustained the injuries when he had been pulled from his car and attacked by three men that had just exited a bar. When questioned about Glenna, Moore said she jumped out of the car at a stop sign and just ran away into the night. Robert Moore had no injuries that would produce the amount of blood he was covered in So much blood, in fact, it completely covered his numerous tattoos. Glenna White's house was just a very short distance away, and that's where we are driving to now to show exactly the path and how long it would take to drive there and back. Glenna White did not come from a stable home environment and was known to have run away in the past, and this led police to initially dismiss her disappearance but eventually came to realize it was more than just a case of a runaway girl, realizing they probably should have investigated this a lot sooner. Robert Moore, for his part, would tell authorities that the car he used to give Glenna White a ride, Deanna's car, somehow accidentally caught fire a week after Glenna's disappearing, fortunately erasing any potential evidence of that night. 14 months later, in August 2010, Erica Tice saw a missing persons flyer and gave a statement to police about the events that happened on June 2, 2009. This would lead investigators to look at the case more closely. Shreve's home would be searched for evidence and the only blood that was found was that of Erica Tice, presumably from her altercation with Glenna that night. At a later trial, Deanna said that Glenna didn't look assaulted when she left with Moore that night. Even though Robert Moore was no stranger to the police, without a body, without a weapon, and no evidence, they could not make any arrest at that time. Our lives are defined by small decisions we make, and these decisions shape the paths our lives take. Cold versus hot, coffee versus tea, Pepsi versus Coke, left versus right, good versus evil. Did Robert Moore pause at this intersection to decide which way to go? If he was taking Glenna White home, he would have turned left. The drive through the streets of Alliance to take Glenna home would have been down this exact road. Alliance cuts through the farmlands of Ohio and it's a tight-knit community. Crime, drug use are rampant in this small town. Everybody kind of knows everybody. 
Along this drive, I observed a truck following me. Having started following me from in front of the Shreve's house. Here is the former home of Glenna White. It took me only 5 minutes and 43 seconds to drive the distance between the two houses. 5 minutes and 43 seconds. Even assuming the trip took 10 minutes each way, Robert Moore could have completed 7 round trips and still had time to get attacked and beaten outside a bar somehow still open at 3 a.m. in the backwaters of Alliance, Ohio. So, what really happened that night? Did Robert Moore really drive Glenna home? Did Glenna really jump out of the car and run away? Or maybe, just maybe, Robert Moore took her somewhere else. Maybe he took her somewhere he was very familiar with. Maybe he took her to Willow Point Beach. The same Willow Point Beach where he beat Virginia Lekorczyk to death and left her for dead face down in the waters of Berlin Lake. Let's go back and take a look. So on that night, to go to Willow Point Beach, Robert would have turned right here instead of left. I made the entire trip from Deanna Shreve's house to Willow Point Beach in 37 minutes. This would fit the exact time frame outlined by Deanna Shreve when she said Robert Moore had gone and left in under 90 minutes. The police initially assumed Glenna White had run away again completely anticipating she would show up soon after, and there were reports that she was seen around town, but now we understand they're completely wrong. After a year, 
Erica Tice would see a flyer posted around town about the missing Glenna White. She returned to the police and told her version of the events of June 2nd, 2009. An investigation was launched and they found blood inside Deanna Shreve's home, but it turned out to be Erica Tice's blood, presumably from the altercation she had had with Glenna on that night. And with no body, no weapon, no evidence, the police could not effect an arrest on Robert Moore. So here we are at Willow Point Beach, the exact spot where Robert Moore violently beat Virginia Lokorczyk to death here in 1993. All this while his father-in-law, James Blue Dowdy, was asleep in the back of the van. He had met her at a bar in Alliance earlier that night and supplied her with alcohol, just like with Glenna White. She rejected his advances, just like with Glenna White. Only this time, he beat her to death so violently, he left ring imprints on a ring that he was wearing on her body when they found her body the following day. He had tried to put a log on top of her body to prevent it from floating away, but swimmers would find it the following day. During an investigation into another unsolved homicide in the area, police were led to a tip provided by an informant assumed to be Erica Tice. This would be enough to lead to the arrest of Robert Moore. In December in 2021, he was arrested and is currently on trial for that murder. The Berlin Lake area is no stranger to murder. In fact, right here off this few town road, so-called Murder Road, there are four still unsolved murders to this day. And just down the road a little bit is a road called German Church Road, where another murder would occur, where a woman who had been drinking in nearby lines was also found dead the following day. There are plenty of places in this area to hide a body. Robert Moore is currently on trial, and his trial is set to resume in October of 2024. Stay tuned.